Hi, I'm Nick Pawson and you're watching News 24 Live. This morning I'm joined by Harry Phillips from Health 24 to give us the latest on the Ebola outbreak. Good morning, Harry. Good morning, Nick. Um, I saw some more scary numbers uh, online this morning. The World Health Organization having this conference in Geneva mm -hmm. predicting 10,000 cases a week by December. Where are they getting these projections from? How are they measuring these numbers? Yeah, it's not a good look. Um, they get their numbers from what they call dead people, suspected dead people, and then they project upon those numbers. Mm. And they're very inaccurate. They've admitted it's very inaccurate. Um, so 10,000 new cases is going to be quite in excess of where we are now. Mm. But if they're saying that, they've got the best information and they're, they're probably on top of it. Yeah. I mean, I kind of feeling that this is maybe just a... A bit of sort of Western paranoia, hysteria. I mean, is it how, how, how accurate is it to the, the, the numbers on the ground? It's hard to uh, say because mm. it's so murky on the ground. I mean, you're in, you've got the jungles of Guinea where mm. there's no World Health Organization, there's no internet. It's very hard to tell how many people outside of the main centers are dying. So mm. the accuracy is unlikely to be particularly high, um, mm. but I'm pretty sure they're, they're doing the best they can. I mean, a few weeks ago, it was, uh, you, you, we were saying that, um, that the cases were going to double sort of every three weeks, whatever, yeah. you know, it's sort of the numbers that we spoke about back then, have they, have they come to fruition mm, they by have, now? They have reached that level. The doubling rate is three weeks, um, and it's still accelerating. Uh, we're okay. looking, there were 20 deaths, a, they now reached 20 deaths a day um, in Sierra Leone. Mm. And it will keep going. We'll get a doubling rate of two weeks, one week. And then it really just starts to snowball. It's a snowball effect. More mm. people have it, the more people they infect, and so on. So what is the, the latest um, in Africa and, and abroad, just in terms of treatments, et cetera? Mm. It's, uh, it's been a mixed bag this week. We've had mm. some good news, we've had some bad news. Uh, most of the good news has been outside Africa. It looks like all of the cases in the US are going to pull through, mm. uh, and then they'll be free of Ebola for now. They've just instituted some very stringent monitoring. Um, if you arrive in America from any of the three affected countries, <coughs> you will be monitored for 21 days yeah. actively. So you have to take your temperature twice a day. And you have to either phone them or go and see them every day for three weeks. Um, so they're really quite worried about it. But as I say, it looks like they've got all of their cases um, under control at the moment. Mm. And they've also shown that with early identification uh, and good health care, you don't have to die. It seems mm. that they're pretty on top of treating people at the moment. So that's a good sign. The problem is the level of health care you're getting there is vastly superior to what you're getting in the jungles of Guinea. Mm. Um, and then this talk of this vaccination, which um, is supposed to be very effective, will only be available in sort of you know, mass quantities early 2015. Yes. Um, that's not very helpful, is it? <laughs> no. Um, there's two vaccines. They're both being developed sort of um, together. They're going to start trialing them hopefully January. Mm. Uh, and that's only going to be on health workers, 20,000 health workers. But that is the health workers who are on the front line. Mm. And then those trials could take weeks, if not months. Mm. And then they have to get into mass production. It's going to take a long time before this vaccine starts making any difference. Um, mm. That's why there's also a lot of focus on actual treatment and saving those who have already got the disease. Mm. And um, Harry, so what sort of economic impact is this having? Um, a lot, yeah. Uh, it's it's really talk about that. Yeah, it's really quite terrible. So these were already some of the poorest countries in the world. Um, Sierra Leone has about 95% of people living below the poverty line, $2 mm. a day. And with Ebola, tourism is obviously out the window. No one's going to go for a holiday in Liberia or Guinea or Sierra Leone. But with that also goes the business travel. So that is really um, sort of hampering the ability of local businesses to continue their business. Uh, the mines have closed down. Uh, a lot of foreign workers at the mines, mm. and they've all been evacuated, so those mines can't keep functioning. And uh, the World Bank released a statement or a report, and they estimate that if this isn't brought under control soon, the costs could be up to 300 billion rand, which is a large amount of money. And this is a vicious cycle because these countries don't have much money mm. to fight the disease. So they can't fight the disease well. And then it costs more, and then they can't fight the disease, and more people get it. And it just spirals out of control, which is mm. why they're continually, the WHO and um, the MSF, are calling for international help. Mm. 
And of course, you're still having riots in places like Sierra Leone. And yeah. uh, I heard there were a couple of deaths, right? You know, because of yeah. these riots. One guy got shot with. Um, yeah, one guy got shot by tear gas and died. It's not good. There's a lack of trust now because they're mm. seeing that it's not being under control. Um, Sierra Leone did have a couple of areas that were Ebola free, and the last week they've both found cases of Ebola. So mm. people don't feel like the government is in control of the situation. So it's understandable why they are not happy and showing their, showing their anger. Mm. And on the home front, South African front, I mean, are we still relatively Ebola free? What's the news here? Yeah, so the general on the surface, it's still looking calm. Um, but it seems there's quite a lot of work going on behind the scenes. Mm. So one of my colleagues visited Tigerberg Hospital this week. Tigerberg is the uh, designated hospital for Ebola in the Western Cape. Okay. They've got four beds, all four separate isolation rooms. Uh, they do have protocols in place. So they seem like they're on top of their game. They have said, however, that they will not be trialing any treatments. So ZMAP, the, uh, the blood serum that the WHO is quite fond of at the moment, that won't be trialed. It's just going to be supportive care and hoping they pull through. But they do seem like they're on top of it. And as, of course, there are still no cases in South Africa. And the strict travel ban is still in place. 